Hello, everybody. Is this, uh, are we on? Not sure yet. All right, there we go. So, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, back to the, well, welcome to the second live stream from A Few Acres of Snow. Um, I have uh, more than a treat for you guys today, I think. Um, the uh, inimitable, I guess. Uh, uh, are we going Dreg or is it J Reg now? Is there. It, uh, it, it, it's pronounced differently every time you say it, but for now, you can just call me J Regular because I'm, I'm normal. J Regular. Okay, yeah, so Jay Regular, there we are. Yeah. So uh, Jay Regular is a former mayoral candidate for the city of Ottawa, and he is also a politics and political uh, satire YouTuber. Um, he actually probably inspired me to be more into mun municipal politics than I ever have before through his, uh, his recent campaign. Um, and I think I'm not the only one. Uh, he previously described himself as anti-centrist and basically for any extremist uh, ideology. Um, however, as we just mentioned, uh, Jay Regular uh, has announced that he has decided to no longer be mentally ill and uh, is committing himself fully to centrism, I understand, as a political ideology. Um, yeah. So welcome, uh, Jay Regular. That, that's correct. That, that's, uh, that, that's, that's, all, that's all correct. Um, did you say... Did you say what, what was that word you used? Amenable? Uh, oh, inimitable. In, yeah, in, in, beginning. How do you spell that? I've never heard that one. Inimitable. In, inimitable. Like, like imi imitate, you know, Im imitable. Oh. So in imitable. imitable so. Right, right. See, I, I heard amenable and I was like, hmm, that's true as well. Um, <laughs> Certainly now with your centrist leanings, you are amenable exactly. to, uh, oh, well, I guess amenable. things within a certain window. I'm the most agreeable man on the planet at this point. Yes um excellent well yeah 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 in, in terms uh, of the oh go ahead I, I have called myself an extremist in the past but that's all behind me you know i've decided to do a 180 on all of my opinions and political beliefs but i still can speak to because i remember my mindset when i was in that uh mentally ill politically extreme phase and uh <laughs> when i was doing that mayoral stuff as well so i i can i can speak to okay. to my thought process behind all of that um but yeah yeah so right but right now i am regular i'm i'm Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so we can uh, we can comment on extremism as much as uh, on on your current state of mind, which uh, is just as interesting, I'd say. Right. Okay. So, uh, in terms of structure today, um, not that we necessarily need one, but uh, I'm hoping this will be more of a conversation. But I have some questions, mm -hmm. um, and as you know, um, I'm a high school teacher, and a lot of the uh, people in the chat are uh, definitely uh, my students, and they have submitted a swath of questions for you. Um, yeah, I got so... I got lots of DMs DMs from your students. That that's that's what uh, that's what tipped me off. That's what, uh, I've, that's I've, what made I I thought you can come on in. <laughs> So good job to your right. students. Thank you. Yeah, I, we really appreciate it. So, or I really appreciate it. Um, so on that line, I think it kind of is in line with your um, uh, with how your introduction there. Um, but uh, Eli and Kellen both ask, uh, what is it that caused you um, or motivated you, I should say, to no longer be mentally ill? Well, you know, um, I, 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 I had it in my head that uh, being mentally ill was, was, was cool and good. Um, mm. And this is a very easy mistake to make. Uh, it seems it like is, being yes. mentally ill, you know, lets you join all these exclusive clubs, um, you know. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'm eager to join clubs and find community. Uh, so I was, I was identifying with every single mental illness to give myself access to as many communities as possible. Mm -hmm. But a couple of years into being mentally ill, I decided this isn't very fun, um, and so I decided to stop. And now I'm good. Now I'm now I'm now I'm neurotypical and healthy. Uh, it's partially because we are the stories we tell ourselves, aren't we? So if you yeah. tell yourself stories that you are mentally ill, if you identify with those frameworks, you'll become mentally ill. And if you uh, are mentally ill and you just tell yourself you're normal over and over again, then eventually you just become normal. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. So 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 when some when someone says, um, "Oh, you're you know you're depressed. Have you tried just getting over it?" And you just get over it. You just listen to what they say, take it seriously, and yeah, right. just do that. Do you feel that this has cut you off from the mentally ill community or yeah, do you the think that being, yeah. yeah, it's, it's true. You know, uh, I've decided to not engage with the mental illness community anymore. Um, and you know, um, part of, part of growing up is, is finding that you can't, you can't have every door open, right? 
uh, you need to you need to close right. some doors. Um, and so, yeah. yeah, I did I did cut myself off from the mental illness community, and I, I feel like, you know, in the long run, that that was actually a good decision because those guys have some serious issues. Yeah, let me tell you. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with those guys, but <laughs> there's something seriously wrong with those mentally ill people. I, I, I can't see, put my finger on. I see. I see. So, so you feel that you no longer have even a a window of of connection to these people, or are you actively just pursuing, uh, you know, cutting ties? So, if anybody were to DM you, for example, uh, and it was obvious in some sense that they were mentally ill, mm -hmm. you would uh, not. Well, respond I, or... you know, I would probably tell them, you know, get some help, see a therapist, take your pharmaceutical medication, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So, uh, I mean, I guess on, on, on in line with that, um, another student, uh, uh, Henry, has uh, asked. I think this is probably the most important question, uh, really, when we're we're, we're talking to uh, such an inimitable figure as yourself. Uh, but how tall would you say you are in scrambled eggs? In scrambled eggs? Oh, uh, you know, I've I've uh, I've never received a question about my height or about uh, measuring my height in scrambled eggs. I am mm -hmm. I am six foot two. Uh, okay. I, I don't know what that equals in, in scrambled eggs. Um, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't talk about my height and lots of people think that I'm short. Hmm. And, uh, I, I think, I think I, I think I like, I like, I like there to be some mystery about, about the height stuff. Right, um, right. but that was the old me that was protecting my identity and ego through layers and layers of lies. And now I'm just an open book and I'll just tell you, I'm six foot two and, wow. uh, Scrambled eggs. I don't know how many eggs that is. I could probably look up wh what the height of like an, the average egg is and do the math for mm -hmm. you. Um, but that doesn't. Well, that but doesn't you see, that's really that cuts to the core of the question right? because it, you know, the the egg, of course, gives shape, you know, to to the, the contents, uh, mm -hmm. which, you know, disappears with the the cracking of the egg into the frying pan mm -hmm. um, and then the mixing, uh, adding milk will actually mm -hmm. change the amount of volume, you know, depending on, you know, butter ratios. I, I, I think, yes. you know, it's, it's a complicated question and uh, it's a complicated is obviously question. easier. You know, yeah. and it depends on what you mean by, by egg. You know, I could go, I could give you a Jordan mm -hmm. Peterson type answer here and just ramble on for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I could talk about the symbiology of eggs and my, you know, my last mm -hmm. era, I was called junior egg. And what and was I a scrambled egg back then? You know, indeed. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Or perhaps but, the second era became, you know, the scrambling. I, I you know, it's it's it's, right. it's interesting. It's all right, important right. questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so maybe getting on to something a little more serious, or not that that wasn't serious. I think these are important questions. But um, uh, Whale asks, um, what do you think about the you 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 are Canadian and uh, you are an Ottawan as well as we know from your mm -hmm. mayoral campaign. Um, yes. But what do you think about our education system here in uh, in Canada and how it serves young people? Uh, you know, um, if you had asked me that maybe three four months ago, I probably would have said something along the lines of basically every system needs real, real structural reform, you know, at, at, a, at a base level uh, in order to make things more modern, more up to date and more relevant, uh, you know, look into things like teaching as many useful life skills as possible, because mm -hmm. you might realize that, you know, you go through your high school education, you don't know, uh, you don't know basic things about uh, the political system, about taxes, about the way that the, the government, the world works. But now I think, Everything's pretty much fine. Uh, yeah, everything's good as is. It's a okay right. in my book. Yeah, change nothing. You know, absolutely nothing. Well, the thing is, nothing is kind of an extreme. Like I'm not. I'm not like. Right. Like, I, you know, whatever the direction is, it, whatever direction we're going in, I want to go in that direction, but just a little, like, like a moderate, moderately slowly. Right. Okay. So, so just enough not to change things too much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, excellent, excellent, great. Thank you. Uh, that was uh, Whale's question. Um, we're, we're doing some student questions, if you're okay with that to start off. Uh, warm yeah, us up course, a little yeah. bit as well. Yeah, um, so, um, student uh, Felix asks, um, he, there was recently an election at his school, uh, and he attempted to rig the election in your favor. Um, oh, I'm... Yeah, I, or, I, I hate to hear it. As a, as a as a centrist moderate, I right. really respect the democratic process. But if you had, if right. you had told me that three months ago, I would have probably said, "Excellent work, keep it up." 
Right. So I guess in comparing your two states of mind, mm. um, do you think you would have taken up the role of student government um, as as a uh, as the person you are in, in, in this stage versus the, yeah. next, the last stage? Yeah. A student government position. Um, you know, mm -hmm. people people might people would have probably found it weird uh, if I if I had just come in and started ruling the student government uh, unelected. But it is something that uh, that I would have done a few months ago mm -hmm. and it probably would have caused me. Uh, probably would have caused me a lot of disassociation. You know, I'd be like, why am I running a student government? And that's that's just one of the many reasons I've decided to be normal because going down that route would have just been totally wacky, totally crazy, totally socially disruptive, uh, although funny. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't think even though, uh, you know, as a centrist, being involved uh, in some sense in, in, in local politics uh, would be valuable? Um, well, you know, yeah, doing um, something is a different thing, but yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. Like, uh, part of, part of why I, I became normal was because, uh, being involved with local politics, you sort of realize that, you know, there's no grand conspiracies in this thing. There's no people pulling the strings. It's just a bunch of, bunch of folks, just like you and me trying to do their best. And, uh, and, and in trying to participate in the system, you do learn a lot about the system and, uh, that sort of grounds you in reality. It takes you out of your ideological comfort zone and forces you to, put the, uh, you know, the, the idea into reality. And then there's some friction and then you, there's compromise with, with the ideas and reality. And that, that's, that's really what the heart of municipal politics is. And the more local, the mo more local you're dealing with, the less ideological you can be. And the more it is about just knocking on doors and talking to people. Do you think that that, uh, that happened during the, uh, the mayoral campaign for you, that it, uh, you were, you had to compromise in some of your extreme views? Maybe your current iteration is an expression of that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would say so. I would say so. You know, I, I came in with all these extreme ideas. And, uh, and then uh, I, I was extreme, 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 extreme. And then, you know, uh, within a 30 second period, I decided, okay, I'm no longer extreme. I'm the exact opposite. So, you know, sometimes it works like that, you know, you would think mm -hmm. it would be more of a, a gradual decline back into sanity. But um, it was more of an inverse kind of thing where it just happened in the snap of uh, my fingers and uh, all of a sudden I was normal. Um, right. But yeah, but yeah ma ma municipal politics yeah. is an interesting, interesting thing to, to, to pay attention to. And you, you do notice some, um, some things that, you know, are, are you, you, you realize a lot about how, how um, the government functions just by, yeah. just by participating. And I, I didn't know really anything about it until I uh, started participating. Yeah. I watched your video on, um, the uh pro like the laws and everything around uh around municipal politics and how mm -hmm. uh daunting that experience was for you do, yes. you, do you think that it's possible for people to participate in politics um at all given all of that that you know i mean you you had a, a community support you and all that but uh you know i mean uh, they're they're the zed shabibs of the world of course but um mm -hmm. to so for someone to to become a catherine mckenney or heaven forbid a mark sutcliffe um like what 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 is the uh the the bar there you know do you think it's too high given your um, experience i think if you're a billionaire <laughs> or if you have a lot of if you, have, if you either have to what i would have said is like um you either have to be delusional or rich um right and it helps to be both simultaneously um but uh do I think it's accessible? I, you know, I'm I, I, not only am I a centrist, I'm also kind of anti-political at this phase in my life. Mm, and wow. my perspective is something along the lines of you shouldn't care about politics, really. You should just uh, live your life, live your simple life, buy your Funko Pops or whatever you want to buy. And uh, you can be content <laughs> with your life. Be happy. Uh, and uh, if you had asked me a few months ago, I would probably have said something more along the lines of uh, it's a big bloated infrastructure and it's completely inaccessible. And uh uh, it's easy to run, but it's a hard. It, it's easy to put your name on the ballot. That's more or less easy. Mm -hmm. It's kind of difficult. Like you, you need an infrastructure around you. But once you actually get get going, you know you need a uh, you need money. You need you need to have the money to run that infrastructure. Right. And uh, and you're not going to be able to come out of nowhere um, <laughs> and do that. Um, but but I think that's a good thing because I think we should just not let 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 the politics people be politics people and and we can be normal normal citizens. Right. Not think about it. Right. Right. OK. So, I mean, on that note, um, you know, you have a, a, an audience here of some 16, not 16 entirely, I don't imagine, but uh, 
few teenagers. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have, from your experience, any uh, any recommendations? I mean, I, I think I know the answer from the the center's point of view here, but um, do you have any recommendations to young people who uh, are interested in getting involved in politics? Um, hmm. Yes. So, uh, don't don't get into politics. Just keep your head in the <laughs> sand. Um, try to avoid thinking about anything difficult. If someone brings up a difficult political topic, uh, just swap immediately to something that doesn't really affect the world. Like, uh, I don't know, a fun show on, uh, on Netflix or a cool game or a sports game. Um, if you insist though, if you insist on getting involved with politics, what I would say is it makes more sense for you to find someone who's established and someone who's established who pretty much represents your beliefs and mm -hmm. instead of um uh instead of trying to if if there is someone that does represent your beliefs 80 70, even 70 percent uh i would try to get involved with their campaign ask about volunteering um and that's probably that would probably be the way to go about it now if there's nobody who represents your interests even a little bit then you can think about starting your own thing and um and running based off of that but uh otherwise i'd say you know if if you're looking at say Catherine mckinney and you're like okay they represent 70 percent of my interests then i would say just look into volunteering for Catherine mckinney right okay cool cool that's great um maybe moving to uh out of politics for a moment oh actually you know what there's another good question here um you know we'll, we'll come back to that one let's move on to a different topic so um this is from this is a question I just personally have for you. So fundamentally, your your work on YouTube, um, you are I, I think you're you're an artist, right? Like you're creating art. That's how I, I see it. Um, mm -hmm. And I uh, my first question for you then is, uh, would you agree with that? And um, if so, why is it that you have expressed so much of your art through politics? Would you say? I know that you have uh, you have poetry as well and everything like it's not entirely, mm -hmm. but there is there's a lot of your content that is uh, politics uh, oriented. I think I think it comes down to the fact that there was an appetite for me applying uh, my perspective to politics um, or I guess, in, you know, to be less egoistic about it, I'd say like there was an appetite for non-standard perspectives on politics. Um People are, I think, tired, or I'd say, like, broadly, people are tired of um, hearing the same back and forth, the same talking points. It feels like nothing really is changing in the political landscape. And, you know, I, I think there's a kind of sclerotic nature to the left, right, left, right, left, right, this and that, this and that. And this is there. If you, you know, if you, if you believe this, you must also believe 100 other things and you're in this camp. But if you believe this, then you believe 100 other things and you're in that camp. Um, and I think that there's a lot of young people um, online, especially, who are thinking of new, interesting ways of engaging with politics. And it's just like mm -hmm. a lot of the political assumptions that we have are sort of uh, are sort of outdated. So the, um, the 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 art that I was doing, like in terms of it being political. Uh, you know, I, before I was doing political art, I was doing all kinds of different art. Um, and it just so happened that the political stuff people had an appetite for. So that that ended up being what I kept doing. Um, mm -hmm. But, it, you know, I, at the end of the day, no matter what I'm doing, I would still apply whatever my perspective was or, you know, my disintegration of perspectives or, or something <laughs> like that. Uh, I would apply that to whatever broader frame I was doing. And so, you know, right. in era one, it was specifically mostly about politics. But then I can also apply that frame to like mental illness frameworks. Or I can yeah, apply yeah. that. Yeah, I can apply that to like I can I could I applied it to like um, gender frameworks. I, I learned mm -hmm. about every gender or whatever. So um, or or astrology or per, or like personality like MBTI and stuff. Uh, big five. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of it is not just like politics, but it's about specifically like the internet. And as someone who spends mm -hmm. a lot of his time on the internet and like a lot of you know, most young people, actually most people now in general, you can't really avoid it. Spend a lot yeah, of your time. Yeah. Um, so that does something that does something to a, a man's brain. Right. Yeah. So it's more so, uh, sort of expressing the internet through your art than specifically politics. Cause there's all of these, these access to a diverse range of, of people, 
identity points, something like that. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I, I will say we li we're living in very politically interesting times. And mm -hmm. a lot of the systems that we've taken for granted are are, uh, are kind of sputtering. Um, or at least they right. would be if uh, I didn't think everything was good and everything's good. So it's fine. It's fine. So, <laughs> Thank you for bringing us back to everything is fine. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, so um, this is a Canadian history and, uh, you know, nominally philosophy channel. And mm -hmm. so I am concerned about questions about what Canada is, what it's been, all that kind of thing. Um, yes. And so this is, I'm not sure if uh, you have necessarily a comment on this, but I'm curious, you know, it's, it's the great Canadian question, um, Canadian identity. So do mm. you think that there is such a thing? Um, and if so, would you, what would you say it is or maybe isn't? Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, I, I, I'm thinking of three things simultaneously right now. Okay, first, that seems like a seems seems like a uh, trying to get me to make a political take, and I've got mm -hmm. no political Indeed. takes in this brain of mine. Indeed, but I know what other people would say. Uh, you know, I have a friend, JJ McCullough. He says there basically is no Canadian identity. We're just um, parodying the U.S. and we should just get annexed because we have no uh, political Indeed, identity. That is um, JJ's point of view. <laughs> And then maybe the third layer would be, if you had asked me a few months ago, I would say uh, there is no Canadian identity and thus, uh, but Ottawa does have an identity and Ottawa should be gobbling up all these municipalities mm, until it's just new indeed. Canada. And then we can all have the identity of Ottawa. Um, but if you force me to develop a political take, um, I guess the most centrist political take would be we have kind of an identity, maybe a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a, decent, a decent amount of an identity. What that identity is, uh, I, you, 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 what, what do you it, think? Multiculturalism is, is that yeah, something that a, a centrist would, uh, would agree with? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, if, if I, if I'm forced to adopt some kind of political framework, it'd probably be neoliberalism and, uh, ah, so right. okay. a neo, good neoliberal framework. Yeah. Multiculturalism. Um, uh, we have lots of different uh, kinds of people due to uh, immigration and we're uh, we're like we're, we accept a lot of people in. So, uh, yeah, like we we have multiculturalism. We have hockey. We have beaver mm -hmm. tails. We have we have igloos. Uh, mm -hmm. We have polar bears. Do you do you have a, an igloo? Are you uh, as, as a centrist? Do you, do you have money. an igloo? Uh, I have, so it's a little weird. It's like half of an igloo built into a, just oh, okay. a regular home. Um, right. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Is your home, uh, in any sense reflective of your centrist, uh, point of view, architecturally, um, decoratively? You know, I've, I've, I'm working on this house right now, which is just half a house. Um, okay. and it's basically just a regular house, but it's been cut right down the middle and right, right. including like the toilet. Right. So there's like, there's like pipes that are just leading to nowhere spewing water and uh it really really fits it really really helps just slot something into place in my mind right what what, what would you say that is that it slots into your mind uh it's just kind of like you know um it's like a satisfying like a thing fitting into another thing perfectly just like oh right 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 oh i see i see wow wow like the the, the physical form you know represents yes. the metaphor it's it's like a, a a meta metaphor in a way right exactly yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> I meta metaphor, right. but I, I yeah. wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, but then again, you know, I I wouldn't want to disrupt the status quo by by looking too weird. So maybe I'll just get a regular like one bedroom apartment. Right, um, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Um, so recently, um, you made a video about uh, all of the roguelikes uh, that you've mm. been playing, and you gave some very uh, um, thoughtful and. Um, uh, well, I wouldn't say too thoughtful. They're, they're, they're thoughtful enough to um, <laughs> to watch. Um, yes. But I was wondering if you think that roguelikes are a useful metaphor for, speaking of metaphors, uh, for mm -hmm. politics at all. Um, you could probably make that uh, assessment, yeah. something like uh, doing the same Given thing. Given your experience. Again. You uh, yeah. do the same thing over and over again, hitting your head against the wall. Yeah. Um, maybe be reincarnating a little bit better each time until you are masterful, skillful at, uh, at, the, at the political game. But then, you know, you, you try to play a different game. You realize none of your skills actually carry over from one roguelike to another. Right. 
uh, which is to say you wasted all your time in the political sphere when uh, right, right. you learned to... Although you made a point of preferring roguelikes with uh, vertical um, progression. Do you think that uh, that is in any sense? Uh, you know, does I Mark prefer... Sutcliffe have really good vertical progression compared to Catherine McKenney, would you say? You know, uh, I don't think that guy's very tall. <laughs> So uh, I don't know about his vertical progression. He could use some vertical progression, perhaps. <laughs> I don't think he's six foot two or anything. So just saying. No, no. Yeah. Um, hey, J Reg, do you play FTL faster uh, than light? Is a really good roguelike. Have you played? Oh, you know, I actually, I, 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 uh, I don't know why. I think I cut that out of the roguelike video, but I talked about it um, when I was filming for it. And uh, yeah, I do. I I uh, I got I got to the final boss many times, but I would always get annihilated um, mm. at the final boss. So it sucks. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's see what else do we have yeah, here. I'm, yeah, I'm kind I'm of burning through one these one questions. Of the ones. Yeah, uh, FTL. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, my uh, another question, maybe uh, as a centrist, you could comment on uh, on the. Um, uh, have you heard of uh, Elon Musk? He's a, a prominent figure in the yes, Twitter yeah. Sphere. I, I think I think I think I've heard the name yeah. before. Yeah, Elon Musk. Um, familiar. Do you think where where would you say uh, firstly that he falls on the political spectrum from your point of view as a centrist? Um, mm -hmm. And do you think that he is uh, a force for good in the world at all, to any extent? Um, I think he's a, a force for. Uh, for neutral um mm. so which is to say uh he's he's guiding us in in whatever direction we're going uh okay so there's this uh <laughs> idea called accelerationism <laughs> uh basically okay. it means that um uh capital capital is as capital uh, accrues and continues it gets more and more pernicious and it becomes right. uh more and more it worms its way uh, pernicious for our for our high school students pernicious being uh, it, like uh, it, it sort of seeps in everywhere. It gets in everywhere. Yeah, and destructive it, and yeah, yeah. It, it gets okay. it gets all, all up. It, it's it's moving in a direction. Where where what is that direction? You know, when a right. when a business owner, when you listen to business owners talk about AI and they're like, oh, I've got to I got to learn AI so I can you know have my right. have my most efficient business possible. Where is that efficiency leading us? So it's obviously it's right. leading to a, a techno capital singularity at the end of time. Uh, where humans okay. get replaced with robots because we're no longer Excellent. efficient enough. Of course. And I think Elon Musk is aware of that eventuality. Uh, there is, uh, you know, there's left-wing accelerationists who believe that we should try to control uh, that techno-capital singularity so that it uh, prevents us from getting eclipsed into uh, right. into robot land. Uh, and then there's right-wing accelerationists who think we should just hurry up and get there. And me, right. uh, I don't think about it. Um, but if I, had to, if I had to guess, I would probably say uh, Musk is uh, aware of the accelerationism, but probably not a super great example of either. Maybe like m maybe more of an unconditional accelerationist who just is like aware of it and, and treats that as his philosophy. He makes a big deal about melding humans with robots. Um, mm -hmm. if that's like kind of the neural link as an attempt to keep up uh, with robots. But it's not clear if that's actually a way that will keep us up with robots or just hasten our replacement. So uh, right. I would say he's some sort of like right libertarian, effective altruist um, mm -hmm. kind of vibe uh, where he's trying to use capital for good, um, good based off of what he believes is good. Um, but yeah, I would say uh, I would say just don't think about it. You're going to give yourself a headache. Right, right. Right. So he due to his, he, he's perhaps a bit extreme then for your 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 tastes. Yeah. I mean, we can get to the techno capital singularity. Just uh, a little slower, please. Just slow, slow, slow down. Right, right, right. right. I, I, I'm not really an accelerationist, but I'm not really mm. a de-accelerationist. I'm, uh, I'm more mm -hmm. of a I'm more of a sell. Or I'm a seller. Yeah, I'm right, a seller. Right. I sell. Yeah. So I guess I'm curious there then. Um, you know, so you you in some sense accept the sort of Elon Musk vision of the future. Uh, in, in some sense, you think that mm -hmm. perhaps we should not be going very quickly there. But what about somebody who has the opposite view, sort of someone th who thinks we should be working towards, um, you know, a, a, a communism, for example, mm -hmm. um, if they were doing so at sufficiently slow a pace, do you think that you would be 
uh, fine with their 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 proposition? Is it? Are you willing to be pulled in all directions simultaneously? I guess is my question. If right. done so slowly, um, that's a good question. Uh, I don't I don't like communists because I'm a centrist. Um, right, right, but, right. but centrism kind of doesn't exist. So. Really, I'm more I'm more anti-political on a deeper level. Oh, I see, I see. The pro see. the problem uh, the problem with being anti-political is that you allow the forces that are already in play to continue playing. Uh, communism is going to be a force that needs humans on the ground um, pushing pushing it forward. And uh, mm -hmm. even if communism succeeds, there's always going to be capital. The capital is just controlled by a state. Uh, and you see that in places like uh, like China, where the, the capital and the state are just one organism that controls capital more efficiently than um, than any other um, country. Uh, and that actually progresses us towards the techno capital singularity further. So really, uh, you can't you can't avoid it. Um, but if if someone wanted to propose a communist system so let's say the communists took over tomorrow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i as a status quoist will just suddenly become communist because that would be the status oh, quo oh i see but I currently see. we're neoliberal so i am currently neoliberal you're currently i see i see so so the whole idea of progress and movement is not even right you don't you, you don't engage in politics that's that's interesting great mm -hmm. um in line with that, I guess, you know, you um, on, on the wiki for you, um, it says that you are in a relationship with uh, uh, Mr. J.J. McCullough, the uh, does, another does popular lot, Canadian it, YouTuber. There's a lot of things on that on that wiki. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I let me let me let me let me look. That so up. you don't want to confirm or deny this uh, this condition? Um, well, I probably can safely deny that one. Yeah. OK, OK. Um, but I will, I will take a look. Um, yeah. Relationship let's... status, JJ McCullough, possibly romantic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that whole, uh, that whole Wikipedia, there's lots of, um, lots of misinformation there. For example, place of birth everywhere, date of death, yeah. never. Apparently it, it appears that I'm, um, a mortal. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, mother, I wouldn't put it past mother. you, you know? Uh, gender. See, this is a little outdated. Uh, it, it still says that I'm drag gender. Um, I actually, oh, I, see. Uh, I actually am normal now, so I don't identify as drag gender. Um, right. And it also believes that I'm three foot nine when we just established that I'm six foot two. Uh, and that's it true. says my that's eye true. color is beautiful. So that's that's fun. That's cool. Um, but <laughs> uh, yeah, no, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, no, no. Uh, romantic relationship status with JJ. No romantic relationship. Well, how would you, you know, as, as a conservative himself, you know, uh, self-proclaimed, uh, mm. and status quoist, at least from the, uh, your, your, um, your meetup in Toronto that you guys both did, it seems mm -hmm. you were both at that time you were of course in a, in a different mental state. Um, yes. So, yeah. But would, would that, if that were to take place today, um, mm -hmm. do you think you would see yourself, um, cheering on Mr. McCullough, or do you think that you are an even more radical um, position than, than, than him? Yeah. You know, uh, I think, I think JJ uh, identifies as a centrist in the sense that he has uh, pretty status quo opinions um, on a lot of things, but then he's declared nowhere, himself to be a conservative though. Yes. Yes. But you know, he's yeah. like, Oh, I'm a conservative oh, Canadian within and, and his uh, audience is mostly Americans. So mm -hmm. they take conservative Canadian to mean American centrist, which is more or less, you know, you can you can spin that either way. But I'd say that's probably more or less correct um, because they view Canada as being more or less to the left of them. Um, okay. And uh, if that if that sort of meeting happened today, um, for example, like uh, annexing. Canada getting annexed by the states is pretty extreme. Uh, so that's too extreme for me. Um, also, the opinion on French people, too extreme. Um, mm, so right. mm -hmm. uh, abolishing the Senate, I mean, why can't we just fire half of them, I would say. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 you know, the that sounds like the, a political position. Um, yeah, well, if, if like, let's say we were about to fire half the Senate of uh, the entire Senate, I would say, well, we'll hold on. Let's only fire half. Of oh, them, I, see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. So first I have to see that I have to hear the political position. 
because uh, before, you know, as an anti-centrist, I would say, let's hear the political position. OK, should we mm-hmm. fire the Senate or should we add a million more people to the Senate? That's I, I would say either one of those. But now as a centrist, I say, mm, let's let's fire half. If we we're going to hire a million of them, I would say let's only hire 500,000. OK, OK, excellent. Great. Thank you. Um, so with J.J. McCullough, uh, you 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 deny any any relationship with him. Um and you you refuse his political position, I guess. You still see him as too extreme. Is, is that what I'm to understand, just to be clear? Yeah, yeah. J.J. McCullough is, uh, is really, really an extremist, if you think about it. Um, wow. Yeah. And, uh, and way, too, <laughs> way too extreme for me, personally. Um, but, you know, in, in many ways, he, he, he has himself to thank for this because uh, he was a big part of in de-radicalizing me. You know, I was... Um, oh, yeah? I was, yeah, I was... I was uh, wow. He was he was definitely one of the one of the catalysts that caused me to become a centrist. Um, so I owe it all to J.J. McCullough, really. But then, I, you know, I went even further than J.J. McCullough is and right. I decided that he's too extreme for me now. Right. To be anti-politics is, mm-hmm. is taking it to the next. I see. I see. Wow. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That's that's mm-hmm. that's really powerful story. Thank you for sharing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Kellen um, asks a question. This is uh, an excellent question, really. Um, why did you get your hair cut? And what m- about that made you normal, I guess, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, as a performer, I put on costumes. And part of um, part of playing a character, the character also plays mm-hmm. you. So wow. if I was if I was going to be adopting this mental illness framework, which I, which I was, uh, being schizophrenic and autistic and all the other ones, um, I was supposed to look like a crazy guy. So I started growing on my hair to look as crazy as possible. And, uh, and then every time I looked at myself in the mirror, I would think I'm mentally ill and crazy. Uh, and then when I cut my hair, shaved my beard and everything and, uh, became normal, um, and I tried to, be, tried to get a fade, although, you know, it didn't, didn't really work out, but I tried to, I tried to get a zoomer fade. And, uh, uh, now when I look at myself in the mirror, I think this is a normal guy. He's sticking to a routine and he's got good mental health. And I just tell myself that story. We are the stories we tell ourselves. And now I'm good. So um, I guess, you know, in terms of telling stories, does it matter if you actually do stick to a routine or does it matter that you tell yourself you stick to a routine? I guess. I think you you have a routine. Right, right. So I have this book. I'm reading this book called Atomic Habits. And it says Ah, the best way to the best the best way to get habits down for yourself is to uh is through identity change because let's say you're a video game addict and you uh you have the identity i'm a video game addict struggling with video game addiction then every Mm -hmm. time you you know open a video game you almost fetishistically like i want to play this video game but i can't ah but if you just tell yourself i'm not a video gamer then you just don't play video games because you're not a video gamer and uh yeah it's the same thing with being normal just uh tell myself that i'm normal i tell myself that uh I have a routine and therefore I have a routine and now I'm very right. structured, very regimented. Mm-hmm. Right. Has this changed your relationship at all with your, your family? I know, uh, you know, you've had your mom, I think in one video that I can remember, uh, she didn't seem to be totally down with, uh, your, your early state in some ways. Maybe I'm, 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 I'm misinterpreting that, but oh, yeah, has yeah, your relationship yeah, yeah. changed no. with your family? Oh yeah. My family's much, much happier that I'm, I'm normal now. Actually, my mom was, uh, Every time she saw me, she'd be like, when is Jay regular coming? Because I told her I was going to switch to Jay regular. She's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Jay regular. So uh, now I'm with Jay regular. I think she's pretty pleased. Um, yeah, yeah, I think she's happier. Right. Mothers seem to wish normalcy for their children. Do you think that mothers are the quintessential centrist? Uh, I or, think... or apolitical? I think they're pretty, st- they're, they want stability. Any parent would want stability for their children. Mm-hmm. Um, that's mm-hmm. just a normal human instinct. And uh, some people, you know, you know, you learn this in Myers-Briggs. Some people are more status quo oriented than others. It's a right. cognitive function called introverted sensing. And basically, it just means like this is someone who cares about the status quo and cares about upholding it. And, um, you know, if you're if, if, if you're not very good at introverted sensing, then you're, you're all out of whack and you're crazy and you're kooky. But if you if you master that the introverted sensing, the um, the st- stability status quo function, then your life gets better because uh, you can have a routine and you're not crazy anymore. And if you're uh, le- like, let's say your mother is a, st- is a status quo person, 
and you want status quo for your children, well then, yeah, of course you're going to want them to, um, you know, look normal and be normal and, uh, and be happy and be stable and all that. You don't want them living a high risk lifestyle. Uh, but you know, at the same time, cause I'm a centrist, you do need a little bit of risk, uh, to, wow. You switch things up and keep yourself fresh and on your feet. And that's important for growth as well. Right. Which is why poverty exists as a means of, of adding that risk to life and, and, and oh, yeah, threatening yeah. you with a possible fall. Yeah. Yeah. Po poverty is, uh, it's what I call, uh, um, God, God, God's self-help. Uh, <laughs> God. <laughs> self-improvement very important <laughs> oh man okay <laughs> uh this is great um so as i guess um uh, another maybe a more serious question and this was something that was um a big part of the last live stream the only other live stream i've done um, mm -hmm. We discussed the, um, you know, the uh, emergency acts inquiry uh, mm -hmm. and the, um, the, re re you know, the fact that we, we understood more about how government was carried out by a lot of the people. There's texts of people swearing at each other and calling mm -hmm. each other names and mm -hmm. infighting and all that kind of thing. And, and mm -hmm. yet there was a national emergency, depending on your position. Uh, mm -hmm. I wonder what you thought about, you know, the, if you have paid attention at all to the inquiry, which I, I imagine you haven't uh, as, mm -hmm. a, as an apolitical person, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. I, I don't, maybe you're not hearing any of the words. I understand that uh, it's just bouncing learning off my politics soul. is not possible for you, but. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I know. I, I, I've, uh, I, I heard about the inquiry. Yeah. And uh you know, my thoughts on that would be something along the lines of um, I really wish everyone could have just gotten along, you know, that the right. truckers right. would have uh, would have honked and honked, but not honked quite as loud. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe honked at half half volume. And then mm -hmm. I wish the emergency act was called. But instead of like cracking their skulls, maybe just like maybe just like bruising them, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I think I think uh, tensions were too high on both sides. The, the the truckers needed to honk less loud, and the police needed to crack their skulls a little less less hard. And then in the middle, when the police were sort of like letting them be, um, I think that uh, they should have let them be uh, moderately less. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so, on that note, actually, I do have um, some images. I thought I could show you. Mm -hmm. um, would you be uh, down for that? So I, I, I have three images, and I'd like mm -hmm. you to express, uh, you know, whatever whatever thoughts come to mind. Maybe just sort of like a Rorschach test is what okay, they're, they're meant it, to yeah. be. Um, okay. So here, let me see if I can get that up here. Um, oh, this is uh, not what I meant, but here we are. So um, let's start with this one. Can you? Use, oh, we can't see it yet. Apologies. Here we are. Okay. Um, seems to be a uh, an American falcon uh, draped in mm -hmm. an American flag, uh, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. symbol of, of mm -hmm. patriotism, symbol of America. Right. Um, Excellent. And he's got these cool sunglasses on. And you know, um, the America ball in uh, pl uh, Poland ball is always mm -hmm. wearing these cool shades because america is mm -hmm. like you know it's gonna let light an explosion in some south american country and walk off all cool right <sighs> wearing aviators uh, of course yeah, yeah wearing aviators yeah. yeah um so that that's that's what that makes me think of it makes me think of a symbol of uh american um uh a freedom a, a, abroad right okay excellent so well, you you did correctly identify the american flag there which is very impressive so for someone anti-political i'm very impressed there so you thank know you. i I, um, okay. I may be anti-political but i uh, i would say i i know some very basic geography yeah right right and you know a moderate flags, a moderate amount like, i guess geography. yeah right enough not to be too offensive yeah of course, i guess yeah. is the okay excellent okay um another image Uh, do we have that? Uh, I, I believe I recognize this one. Um, that is uh, Justin Trudeau. Okay. Um, now, some right wingers say, "Oh, that's the son of, uh, I believe, Fidel Castro." Um, as a centrist, yeah, I, do yeah. a, I do a I do a bit of a compromise. I say he's the 
um, fourth cousin three times removed of Fidel Castro. So the relation is still okay. there. What what what's the importance of that importance of that uh, distance in family to you? Uh, in terms um, of well, because you know, basically by saying uh, he's the son of Fidel Castro, he's saying they're saying he's a communist, and I say no. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, he's he's definitely related. Don't get me wrong. Um, but the, right, the, right. the lineage is much more confusing and, and all over the place. Just like my relationship with Che Guevara, right? Um, you know, my great right. Uncle. True. True. Um, so uh, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's that is uh that is that, that's the case and that may be why justin trudeau is a neoliberal but i'm i'm happy with wow. him because i'm also a neoliberal right of course so actually it does strike me that you know given your familial relation to uh sheikh Guevara, who was part of fidel castro's path to power um mm -hmm. do you not feel that in some sense you are also the prime minister um you know, if you'd asked me that a couple months ago, I would have I would have emphatically said yes. And actually, I would have right. identified as the anarcho monarch of Ottawa and claimed victory. Wow. Um, wow. You know, I'm, I'm feeling past all of that now. And I, uh, I, I, I would right. say just because we're related doesn't mean that there's there's anything going on beyond just the relation, except there is a little bit, but only a little bit, only a moderate amount. Right. right. So does do you see him at Christmas time, I guess, is my most um, important question here. I, I tend to see him. Well, I tend, I tended to see him at night um, uh, oh. during a few of my, uh, my episodes, but um, not anymore. Not anymore. I'm good. Oh. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so I just have one last image for you. Um, yeah. And uh, it, it, if, if this is uh, harmful in any way, you feel free not to comment, but sure. Okay. Ah, ah. Oh, I'm, I'm just associating. Sorry. Uh, uh, um, it appears to be, uh, appears to be a previous version of myself, uh, a very misguided okay. version. Um, right. Uh, appearing, appears to be wearing some sort of Joker, uh, costume. Mm -hmm. Um, although very, a very postmodern Joker costume that seems to almost be making right. fun of the very idea of wearing a Joker costume. Which seems to me to be right. a little, you know, a little overly defensive. I mean, come on, you're allowed to enjoy things. Um, and uh, I think it's probably a reference to a viral TikTok sound called uh, I'm a lot like Joker from the movie Joker, which was popular on TikTok for about like three minutes. And uh, and yeah, that's probably what it's a reference to. OK, excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Jay Regular. Um, here, let's close this one down. Okay, so um, I don't know. Uh, there, there's one last thing that a, a student asked. I'm not uh, who though. I didn't write it down. So unfortunately, if if, if you're in the chat, you can always claim uh, um, ownership of this. Um, but uh, what would you say to people here who uh, are? I'm, I'm particularly thinking of your video. Uh, I don't in brackets want to be famous. It's from three mm -hmm. years ago, of course, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Very, really great video, by the way. I, I, I was particularly touched by it myself, I'll, I'll admit. Mm -hmm. And, and no, no irony meant there. Um, but what would you say to young people who are interested in building a uh, an online uh, career of some kind, whether it be YouTube, uh, streaming, what, whatever it is? Do you, do, would you recommend that they go down the path? Uh, what are some of the recommendations you generally have for them as people that want this? Okay, uh, so I think I would say, first of all, don't go down the path. But I only say that because if hearing uh, don't go down the path makes you not want to go down the path, then you shouldn't go down the path. Um, so basically, you know, it's, it should be something that you will want to do, even if everybody in your life tells you not to do it. Um, if, if there's people telling you not to do it and you're like, oh, maybe I should just do this instead, then you should probably just do that instead. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to be really committed. Okay, and then if you are really committed, um, set yourself deadlines. So be like, every week for the rest of my life, <laughs> I'm going to post something here. And it doesn't matter if it's good or not. I'm just going to get it out. And just keep doing that. Uh, you can do it every week. You can even do it every month if you want to set yourself mm -hmm. that, that deadline. And then get someone to hold you to that deadline. So get someone uh, in your life, maybe a friend or uh, you know, a sibling or whatever, someone you trust. And be like, if I don't, if I ha don't release this thing that I'm working on, um, every week or every month or whatever, then I owe you a hundred bucks or I owe you or however much money you have. I owe you five bucks or I'll do something for you that you don't want to do. Um, and that's just enough of a, uh, 
because we're, we're all pretty uh, dopamine messed in this modern day. And uh, it can be hard for us to like maintain focus on a creative project or, or something online. And uh, I think as long as you keep doing that regularly, and if you start now when you're in high school, then you know, you'll be <laughs> you'll be good when you're uh, when you're an adult. I mean, probably um, if you start now and you start making yourself deadlines and you start putting in work every day, then uh, that's basically what you have to do. And that's that's essentially what I did. Uh, I, I would just keep putting stuff out there and it can be very dark and disheartening uh trying to make it mm -hmm. and it, it, mm -hmm. it can also help there's not there's no shame in um having a backup plan and pursuing a backup plan while you do the thing but there is danger in getting uh a little too wrapped up in your backup plan and the backup plan becoming your uh, only plan so uh right. i would say exercise moderation there and uh, go after your dreams, but not too much. And uh, the, deadline <laughs> thing, the deadline thing is actually really important. Like you should, you should get someone to hold you to your goals because um, if there's no one around you who has the same goals as you, then you're going to just become like everybody around you. And uh, that's not good. Like if, you, if you're trying to be an artist, say, on, on the internet, that's a very difficult, that's a tall order and it's going to be extremely difficult. And you should, and people are, will be willing to help you. But uh uh, you have to find a way for them to help you in a way where like you're not being um, burdensome or anything. And, and best way to do those deadlines. Uh, that's been, that's been really right. helpful for me. Right. Right. Do you yourself see like, uh, you know, you talk about art and that kind of thing. Do you, do you, do you want to do um, like, is this your home? I guess the internet kind of thing, or do you want to, I don't know, an art exhibit at a museum, like for example, or, or, or at a gallery. Is that something that you, you know, I know that that's only one specific form of art. Mm -hmm. of course but but yourself is wanting to do i, I want to do as many, that way i, well. I want to do as many different kinds of art as possible i like video games right. i like uh i like making video right. games i like making uh stories cool. and story books and uh you know spoken word is one of my passions and I, I there's lots of different forms of art that i'm really interested in getting into i did perform at a uh really kind of like strange art exhibition and my exhibition was i had two big speakers and one speaker was blaring Tucker Carlson and the other speaker was blaring <laughs> John Oliver. And I was on the ground on this oh, like God. really decrepit, uh, dark alley. And essentially it was a live exhibition where I was like, ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah, like just freaking out basically yeah. getting overwhelmed. Um, and that was very fun. And I, I really enjoyed uh, doing something live and it, you know, it was like a performance for maybe like, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 people saw me. Uh, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I, 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 uh, I, I really found it, uh, it cool and special. And, you know, I, 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 mean, I think I'll probably always have something to do with the internet, but I would, I would definitely like to uh, work with, with, um, people in reality more because that, uh, that's right. what I find to be, uh, ultimately the most rewarding rather than just being in your room, yeah. and making a video and editing yourself. And it's totally insular and it's not very fun. And working with other people is really what life is, is all about. You know, you, you need people mm -hmm. and you need to work with people and finding an artistic community. Uh, if you are thinking about, or even just like a digital community, yeah. if you just make, make, um, uh, videos or whatever you want to do, uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. Cause if you have no kindling, then your sparks will eventually die. You can't keep them up just by yourself through sheer will alone. I mean, maybe some yeah, of you yeah, can, yeah. but it's very difficult. So, so getting community is super important. Right, right. And and you know, how, how does how do you do that? I guess like so. Is that just? It's easy, easier said than done. But uh, I think you have to put yourself yeah. out there. You know, if there's a mm -hmm. if there's an older person in your life who uh, you really look up to, you know, you can ask them for mm -hmm. advice or mentorship. Uh, you know, if they're mm -hmm. doing something that you want to be doing, uh, you can go online and you can see, you know, if like, let's say, you know, let's say you want to do a spoken word. There's a subreddit with spoken word people on it. And I think it has like a thousand people on it or something, which is small, but it's not nothing. And, you know, make a post there and see what happens. You, like a digital community or a discord or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. If you put serious effort into putting yourself out there put get yourself involved with as many as many of these groups as possible and then be talented and put the work in and it's only a matter of time before something happens right cool great well that is awesome uh, uh jay regular um i think I, I think i don't have any more uh questions for you from here but uh thanks for all that that advice there oh i do see a question in the chat though um serious question what do you think of rucka rucka ali 
Do you know? Does that make uh, any sense? He's an object. He, I believe he's like an Ayn Rand guy. Like he's uh, he's literally an objectivist. Uh, that's oh, that's that's how I knew about him. He's a uh, his political orientation. And uh, I now I used to find that very cool, and now I find it very lame because uh, Ayn Rand was uh, a psychopathic cult leader. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> So okay, <laughs> I like how you know I I I will say that this this uh, iteration again of of uh, J regular bouncing between the two phases. I feel like there is uh, there's something uh, there's a, a third form of uh, of J reg uh, of dreg in there that um, is confusing, uh, but good. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, well, I don't think uh, um, I have anything else myself, uh, unless any of the uh, people in the chat have any comments or questions they'd like to make. Um, I don't know. Do you have any final uh, comments or any thoughts you'd like to to share with uh, with the folks here? Uh, no, that's that's all. That's all. Um, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, yeah I, I would really. I, I guess I would really uh, focus in on that. If you know, if you're trying to be. Uh, creative person on the internet I, I would say i would say consistency is the most important thing because as long as you're consistent you'll be improving um as long as you can get something out release something and then move on to the next thing uh right like what i what i would just recommend you don't do is do not pick a super ambitious creative project for your first thing and then spend like five years on it never never do that that's right. you don't have enough time on the earth to do that um so just don't do that right so just pick something, do what, good enough, and and put it yep, out there. Exactly. And, and exactly. Repeat. And just keep keep doing that. Repeat, repeat, repeat. You're like the at the end of the day, you will be able to spend five years on the creative project at some point. But I'm not even at the point where I can do that, so I wouldn't recommend you do that. All right. Awesome. Well, uh, Jay Regular, thank you so much for for coming on. As a small small creator myself, it meant a lot mm -hmm. to have somebody with. Uh, your your following uh, come on so I really appreciate well, it. Well, uh, and I think my students are really yeah. we're really excited to hear you. So, well, yeah, and uh, you know I I I think your your students did a good job uh, getting me here and they 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 mobilized very well. So uh, definitely great students and uh, yeah, great interview. Appreciate you having me. All right, <laughs> perfect. Well, uh, thanks a lot, and uh, see you later. Uh, hopefully, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I will. I don't know. Uh, awkwardness. So yeah, there we yes. go. Bye. <laughs>